Hi, this is Synth Chaser from SynthChaser.com, and we're back with more Lindrum fun. So, um, in the last video, uh, we repaired uh, two Lindrums. One of them was this one here, and the uh, the same customer acquired another Lindrum uh, and, and brought it to me. I, um, and well, I'll open this up. The uh, the one that he got. Uh, didn't have the uh, the five volt board, so I've taken the uh, the five volt board from his uh, his working one that that I repaired in the last video or I serviced in the last video, and uh, we put it in here so we can test this out. Um, you know, pending pending him obtaining a uh, replacement aftermarket board, and uh, we're going to test this out and uh, and see if it works. Um, he bought this. Uh, Obviously, not knowing whether it would work or not, and uh, and we'll find out. So, with the five volt uh, board installed from the working Lin drum, um, this does power up, and uh, I can record songs. <laughs> I guess it's subjective whether I can record songs and patterns or not, but the machine can record songs and patterns. And uh, for the most part it seems to be working well with a few exceptions. So uh, there's uh, 23 sound, drum sounds that this machine makes, and uh, or that the Lin drum is supposed to make, and this particular Lin drum only makes 15 of those. So I'll run you through them and you can see what it can do and what it can't do. Starting with percussion. Kabasa is working, tambourine is working, conga high and low is not working, cowbell is not working, claps are working, so I'll take percussion off, side stick is working, all three snares are working, bass is working, crash is working, all three hi-hats are working, None of the three toms are working, and when I do ride, it does this. So, I'll turn it off. Um, basically, I think we have three, three problems here. The uh, conga and toms share the same branch of circuitry. So if we figure out what's wrong with that, we probably will restore all five voices. Uh, ride probably, ride one and two probably is uh, the same same problem causing both to fail. And, uh, and then cowbell is probably our third problem. So uh, we're going to open this up and get started. So I busted it open and uh, one of the very first things that I noticed was that the uh, ride, one of the ride ROM chips is, uh, is very, very hot. This one here, and uh, since you can't uh, touch it um, through YouTube, uh, not yet anyway, um, I, I'll show you with my uh, thermal camera. So I'm pointing it here at that ROM chip, and it's 250 degrees Fahrenheit. You can see it's the hottest thing in there, even hotter than the, uh, the bridge diodes. So I'm going to power this down, and we'll see what's going on there. So I was about to measure um, between the uh, the VCC and ground pins of the ROM to see if it was shorted, and uh, and and something very obvious stood out to me. So you see these other ride ROMs. Um, pin one is right here. Uh, the notch of the chip is at the bottom. Uh, but on this one. The, uh, the notch of the chip is, is at the top. So uh, someone installed this chip upside down. So I'm going to, uh, to flip it and, and see if it, uh, if it still works or if it's been hopelessly fried. There's even a friendly message here. Important voice chips must be installed with notch front as shown. And a little picture with the notch in the front. And that applies to all of the chips, not just this one with the arrow pointing at it. 
So unfortunately we'll never know if this chip survived being uh, plugged in backwards because uh, the, uh, the chip had been treated pretty badly and, and when I pulled it um, and tried to straighten out one of the legs it was already pretty tweaked and it snapped off. So I burned a new ROM and now, now ride one and two are working. So uh, two down, six to go. Cowbell uh, apparently was a user error. Uh, so what I did when I troubleshoot a voice is first I, I take the uh, output from the main left or right channel and I stick it in the, uh, the individual output and I was hearing the cowbell there and uh, then I, I went back and, uh, and I noticed that I had the, uh, the, or the cowbell slider was, uh, was on the opposite channel than the one that I was was listening to. So uh, when I put the slider in the center position, cowbell is working just fine. So uh, three down, five to go. So I'm tracking down the uh, the missing toms and conga, and likely it's it's the one one problem uh, causing all five of those sounds to be out because they they share the same circuitry. So what I'm going to do first to make sure that the clock and the the data bus getting to this part of the circuit is is correct is I'm going to monitor the the ROM and activate one of the sounds, and I'm going to see if the ROM gets addressed. So what I'm doing now is I'm monitoring pin 18 of one of the Tom's ROMs. And uh, it, it's normally high, and pin 18 is the, uh, the chip select pin. So I'm going to then press one of the Tom's uh, buttons and see that the uh, chip select goes low, which shows that the uh, ROM is being accessed. I'm going to hit the button, and chip select does go low for a short amount of time, indicating that the ROM is being read. I can hop over to the other Tom's ROM since it takes uh, two of these to, uh, to make the sound and hit the button again and the, the ROM is being accessed. So I know at this point that everything up to the ROM is working and I'll move on to the next checkpoint. So once the ROMs are read, they go through uh, this chip here, actually sorry, for, for Tom's it's this one under here. Uh, which is an AD6070, uh, which is a digital to analog converter uh, that's used in these types of drum machines. So uh, this is taking the, uh, the binary data that it gets from the ROM and converting it to an analog voltage. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually move to the next chip, which is an op amp after that, this U85 right here. And I'm going to check the output of this op amp to see if uh, if the uh, the digital data in the ROM is being decoded to an audio waveform, and when I press the button, you can see that in fact it is. So uh, reading the ROMs is okay. Creating the the waveform is okay. The next step is uh, this chip here, U86, which is a Curtis filter CEM3320. So uh, for comparison purposes, I'm going to show you um, another uh, voice in the Lindrum that uses this Curtis chip, uh, and that's the bass. So uh, bass uses the same Curtis chip, and we're going to monitor its output, pin 10 on U93. So it looks like normally it's hanging out at about seven volts, seven and a half volts when it's not being used. And you can see when I press the base switch, the waveform appears there. Now let's, uh, let's take a look at the same Curtis chip, the 3320, for the, uh, the toms and conga. So I'm going to monitor pin 10, and right away I notice that the, uh, the voltage is just slightly negative instead of being centered around 7 like it was before. And when I press the buttons, there's no output. Um, so uh, there's really, I mean, we, we directly come from that op amp to this Curtis chip, and there's some resistors and capacitors that uh, external to the, the Curtis chip that it uses, uh, but passive components like that rarely fail. 
So at this point, it's looking likely that the, uh, the Curtis filter chip is responsible for these voices not working. And while I say that passive components rarely fail, uh, it looks like these uh, film capacitors here are damaged surrounding the Curtis chip. There's some damage there and some, some damage there. Looks like someone may have uh, nicked it with a soldering iron or something. So uh, before I touch the Curtis chip, I'm going to desolder these four capacitors and test them. Uh, normally I would just replace them, but I don't have that value of... Uh, of capacitor right now and this is kind of a, a quick turnaround repair I only have this machine for a day or two um, so I'm gonna pull those out and test them and uh, if they test good I'm gonna put them back uh, and then I'll, uh, I'll replace the Curtis chip interestingly uh, looking underneath the board here this is that Curtis chip and I can see that someone at some point has desoldered it and either put it back or replaced it uh, but there's definitely been rework done to this chip. Even though they look bad, uh, I've taken them out of circuit and tested them, and they are okay. So I'm going to put them back in, and uh, we'll try swapping Curtis chips. So with the suspect Curtis chip swapped out and uh, the capacitors put back in, uh, now we have uh, Tom's sound. we have a tuning control over low and, and high toms. And it uh, doesn't seem like we have tuning control over the low congas, but uh, we did prove that the, uh, the Curtis chip was bad and uh, we brought these three voices back. Now we'll take a look at the little um, nuances that we're, we're having with them. So here's what I've noticed about these, uh, these problems with the toms and congas that we just brought back. So, uh, sorry, uh, high and low conga, uh, pretty much sound the same. And, uh, in fact, if I adjust the, the tuning of the, uh, high conga when I'm playing low conga, it, it's pretty apparent that I'm, I'm actually playing high conga. So these buttons appear to both be triggering high conga instead of high and low conga respectively. Similarly, uh, with the toms, the mid and low toms uh, sound the same. And in fact, when I adjust the tuning on the, the mid toms, it affects it when I'm pressing the low toms button. So again, it seems like uh, these two buttons are triggering the same sound, which is mid toms. Uh, and then the, uh, the third issue is the high toms uh, doesn't, doesn't seem to be responding to tuning. So um, looked at it and, and uh, now I have something to look for in there. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to check to make sure that the, uh, the data line that tells the, uh, the, the drum board which uh, instrument to play is uh, receiving and correctly latching the correct data. So I wound up finding uh, two things. One is uh, this D3 and D2 are reversed. Uh, in fact, uh, Q, Q2 is, uh, of, of this uh, IC is, uh, is data bit 2 and, and vice versa. So just uh, save yourself some frustrating time and uh, make a pencil in your service manual there. And then what I found was uh, this uh, 4051 uh, multiplexer, demultiplexer, uh, was bad. Um, so I changed, I changed that chip, and now I have high and low congas, and uh, all three toms, and I can control them uh, with the tuning pots there. So uh, now all the uh, electronics issues have been repaired with this Lindrum and I'm just going to do a cleaning of the sliders and the pots and it will be set to go home with its owner uh, shortly. So I hope this video uh, was entertaining for you Lindrum lovers out there and uh, helpful for, for anyone who's uh, 
trying to uh, troubleshoot and repair uh, dead drum sounds on their Lynn drum. Uh, this is Synth Chaser from SynthChaser.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.